Hello, family and friends, and welcome to Penang Trinity. It is so good that we can gather together as a body of Christ to worship God together today. Let us begin our worship by saying the scripture sentence together, taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. Let us read the word of God together. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Let us unite our hearts and our voices as we say the opening prayer together in unison. Sovereign Lord, we wait with faithful anticipation for the coming King of glory, our Lord Jesus Christ. Draw us to worship you in spirit and in truth, even when troubles and sorrows billow like storms around us. Heal and unite our broken and unfaithful hearts, Father, through your Holy Spirit, who comforts, binds, and raises us as one voice in heavenward songs of praise to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Lift up your heads, all you people. Come and let us praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. grateful that we have this peace from God, Lord, during these difficult and challenging times. Remember when Jesus was born on the way to Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph faced many difficulties. Let us remember and keep this in mind as we go through this period, as we usher in the season of Advent, that we can remember that whatever situation that we're in, God is with us and He has given us His peace which surpasses all understanding and which will see us through everything in life. Let's just spend a moment to thank God in our personal way before we sing our next song, It Is Well With My Soul. Sorrow 
gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your presence among us and your presence in our lives, Lord. Draw us close to you, Lord, wherever we are, in our different places, at homes, various homes, Lord. Come upon us, Lord. Fill our lives, fill our homes, fill our families, Lord. Shine your light of love to all the people around us, Lord, that we may show the goodness of you and your love to all. I pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit, you're captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit, you're captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. Drawing me closer to you, I feel your power in you. Nothing, Nothing compares to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit. You're captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hands, drawing me closer to you. I feel your power renew. Nothing compares to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hands, drawing me closer to you. I feel your power renew. place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I worship you in spirit and in Let's continue to worship Him in spirit and in truth as we bring the following things to God in prayer. The first thing we want to pray for is for the unity of the global church to cut across different denominations as the gospel is preached to all nations. Will you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Lord, as the Holy Spirit came upon the believers at Pentecost and united them amidst their varying languages, cultures, and backgrounds, we pray for His unifying work to continue within your church across the globe. We ask for a breaking down of barriers that may have come up as a result of differences in preferences, personalities, and politics. During a time when the world is in need of help and hope, May churches all around the world find ways to cooperate and leverage on the common mission we all share. The message of the gospel of Jesus, spreading it to all who need it, and the love of Christ that accompanies it. In your mercy, Lord, may you hear our prayers. Second thing we want to pray for is for all Malaysians who are struggling with finding employment and for households that don't have sufficient income during this time. Let's pray that God will provide for all their needs. Let's pray. Father, we bring before you our fellow countrymen and even those within our community who are feeling the effects of the pandemic because they've lost jobs, clients, or any other means of income. 
We pray also for those who are feeling the strain of supporting more than they are used to at this time. Lord, while you meet their needs, may you grant them insight to see that money is not the deciding factor of a life worth living. Show them, Lord, that you are the true source of all that sustains us. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Thirdly, we want to pray for the community life of Penang Trinity to thrive despite the reduction of face-to-face -face meetings. Let's pray. Lord, we bring before you Penang Trinity, our Penang Trinity family, where we're used to the fellowship and support that we encounter face-to-face, -face, week in and week out. And yet, Lord, we are forced to adapt to online mediums, not just in church life, but also many other areas of our lives. So help us, Lord, to look past the forms and to find the substance of what it means to be a community in Christ. Give us that sense of togetherness, not only when you see our, uh, the faces of one another during prayer meetings, small groups, uh, Bible studies and fellowship meetings, but also when we sing your praises, when we listen to your word, when we partake of the Lord's Supper later. We know that the physical space does not contain you, O oh God, and so neither does it contain our bond of Christian fellowship. And so may you unite us, Lord, though we may be far apart physically. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Lastly, we want to pray that we might build up the, com the common body of Christ in all that we say and do. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we want to pray for ourselves how we individually make up the collective body of Jesus. May you move us to do all that we can to build up the body of Christ in the exercising of our diverse gifts, in the encouraging of one another with our speech, and in the exalting of your name by bearing good witness and testimony to the united body of Jesus. Give us compassion, wisdom and insight to avoid seeing and doing all that may potentially tear others down. And may we instead seek to build them up for your sake. We pray all this in the name that we all worship and adore. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now in this season of Advent, over the next three weeks, uh, we'll be having three testimonies from different people within our community to share about their journey with God. And so the, the first person who's sharing this week is Sister Susan Ui. Uh, she's been a member of our church since 2008. Uh, she's also been active in the worship and music team. And she typically attends a 5 p.m. service uh, when there is a, a 5 p.m. service. And so she has something to share about her experience with God this year. So let's listen to her testimony. Welcoming the year 2020 was not as expected. I was diagnosed with a major condition and needed to undergo emergency surgery at the beginning of this year. Things didn't get better after surgery. So in order to solve the post-operation complications that I was facing, another major surgery was carried out a few months after the first one. It was not easy to undergo two major surgeries within a year. The traumas and two big words, why God and why me, were always echoing in my mind. Although I felt God was silent, but at the same time, I experienced His faithfulness which never failed. He sent rainbows and many other assurances through the Bible to bring me through the pain and struggles. Though I felt He was silent, but it is clear to me now that He was always listening to my prayers all the while. He sent brothers and sisters in Christ to help and pray for me through the long journey. Many of them even took turns to send me to the hospital and fetch me back, in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic. Through them, I experienced the love of God constantly. As a result of my medical condition, 
I came across total strangers to whom I could show care and love like it was shown to me. I feel deeply grateful to God for His goodness to me that I want to share that goodness in some ways to those who are going through similar situations. Through all these experiences, I learned that God will never leave me unattended to and His faithfulness is anew every morning. Our God is a great God. Although the year began in a gloomy way for me, but it is coming to an end with the light of Christ shining in and through my life. Thank you, Jesus. We want to praise God for His love and faithfulness to our dear sister Susan Ui. I know a lot of you have been keeping her in prayer and we just want to praise God for that, the act of grace and healing upon her life and we continue to keep one another in prayer even as we face life's challenges together. So praise God for His uh, faithfulness and for all of you who have been keeping our dear sister in prayer. Okay, if, I, okay, if you see like that, uh, don't, don't move too much, right? Okay, okay, okay. Hi and good Hi. morning, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our online worship service this morning at live.pinangtrainee.org. I have Jing with me this morning. Why don't you say hi to everybody? Hi. 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 Right. Hi. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, how many more days till Christmas do we have, huh? Jing Jing? 19. 19. Oh, is that a long time away? No, right? It's quite soon. Okay. Are you excited? Excited, huh? Okay, with all the presents, huh? It's going to be quite a different Christmas this year, but uh, we celebrate the birth of who? Jesus! Well done! Last week, we, Uncle Chongjin and I talked about the candles, right? For the season of Advent, remember? And uh, what did the first candle represent? Oh. Hope, okay. Uh, and then, what about the second candle? Faith. Faith, isn't that your name? Well done. Okay. Yeah. And what about the third candle? Joy. Joy, okay. And then... Followed by peace, and then on Christmas Eve we light the Christ candle, right? Well done. So guess who got all the answers correct? Auntie, Auntie who? Auntie Willin, uh, whose mama is well that? Done. Uh? Isabel's mama. Okay, congratulations, Auntie Willin. Uh, and who else got the answer correct? Teacher William, William. and then. Uncle Jeremy. All right. Well done. Shall we say congratulations to all of them? Ready? Okay, together, together. One, two, three. Congratulations for getting the answers correct for the Advent Candle Challenge. Right. I'm going to ask Uncle Chongjin to now help me with the rest of the announcements, right? Thank you so much for joining us, Jing. Hello? Okay, bye. Well, thank you very much, uh, Faith, for helping us... Uh, talk about uh, last week's uh, question and we're so glad that uh, all of you participated and we're happy oh, yes. to see that uh, uh, William and uh, Jeremy and William are quite in tune with our Methodist traditions. Indeed. Right now we want to uh, come to the uh, part where we want to present our offerings before the Lord even as we remember His uh, love and faithfulness and provision to us. As usual, to each uh, payment channels over on the left QR code for the touch and go. If you want to give a few free will offering. And over on the right there is our Maybank account. Please uh, use that for your pledges or the Holy Communion offering. Uh, again, very thankful for your generosity uh, towards the Holy Communion offering last month. For the month of November, uh, we received a total of 20,971 ringgit. That's 20,000. 971 ringgit. This goes entirely to the El Shaddai uh, ministries and the work that they are doing. Thank you very much once again, Penang Trinity. Yeah, and it's uh, again very important work that they are doing uh, in the lives of the, the refugee communities. And again, praise God for His uh, uh, moving among our community here to be continue to be generous. And uh, over in uh, December this month, um, as we kind of shared with you last week, uh, this month's Holy Communion offering will go to support the Lighthouse Ministry in Kapik, Sarawak and they are doing a lot of good work for the communities there who are facing a lot of social ills and we trust that the Lord will continue to move us, provide for us to be a blessing uh, to these uh, very important ministries that are happening. So uh, be prayerful even as we consider 
um, the second offering uh, in support of the lighthouse work in Kapik. And most of us are aware that uh, uh, that uh, the late Mr. So Chi Tong passed away on December 3rd. Our heartfelt condolences to uh, Grace and the rest of the family. Uh, the late Mr. So served as a finance steward and, uh, and has always been a uh, familiar face as he served together with his wife as an usher. So uh, our condolences once again to the family. The sending of service was held yesterday uh, at 10 a.m. And we also want to, again, uh, uh, just remind all of us here, our Christmas uh, week, uh, services, uh, special year-end services we have on Christmas Eve, um, our candlelight uh, service. And we'd like to welcome you uh, to participate in this service at 10 p.m. Also on Christmas Day, our combined service, of course, everything is combined now, but our uh, Christmas Day uh, service at 10 a.m., even as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, this will be followed by our Watch Night Covenant service. This will be on the 31st of December um, at 10.30 p.m. So looking forward to worship the Lord together with all of you. Indeed. So friends, that wraps up the community news for this Sunday. Shall we all respond with the singing of the doxology? reading is taken from chapter 3 verse 1 to 11. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos. Are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. But the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends, before I begin, shall we bow our heads in prayer? Let's pray. Come, O Holy Spirit, and so inspire us, in the same way that you inspired the writers of these scriptures. Grant in us a wisdom and an understanding. And search our hearts, Lord, that we may respond to you in unity of heart. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Have you been following our study series on 1 Corinthians with uh, Dr. Lim Kayong these past few weeks? It's been a fascinating study thus far, touching on the Apostle Paul's response to the Corinthian church's various problems like disunity, court cases amongst believers, sexual misconduct, and a question of rights relating to eating food offered up to idols, at least thus far. We have two more sessions to go, and it will touch on an explosive topic of chaos in worship. And so if you want to catch up on what you missed, we have uh, posted 
the replay of the sessions and the discussion uh, uh, questions on the http me.penangtrinity.org uh, slash one Corinthians. It, it, it's up here. Um, so have a look at that. And uh, so don't forget to join us this coming Wednesday, 8 p.m. for our next session. And uh, contact the office if you need us to resend you the Zoom link uh, that was sent out to those who registered. Today, uh, as we touch on 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 11, we are looking at the biggest and overarching first issue that Paul tackles in the Corinthian church. Uh, the issue is disunity within the church. Now, is disunity a big issue for the church or the family? What do you think? I'm sure that you have uh, your own grievous story of disunity to tell. But if you'd like to know the mind of Christ uh, in his longest prayer in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, Jesus prayed, and it's recorded in verse 21, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So Jesus' longest prayer focused on unity within the church. Now our Christian unity, or lack of it, seriously affects the ability of the world to believe in Jesus. Uh, that prayer effectively says this so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Unity is central to others believing in our Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, our Christian unity in God contributes towards the growth of the church, spiritual growth and kingdom growth. And our disunity destroys it. But what was it that was causing disunity in the Corinthian church? And how do we learn from their mistakes? Well, Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 16, that just precedes what we just read in the, in the scripture reading earlier on, wanted them to have the mind of Christ and to be spiritually united with God. But some of the believers, rather than putting on the wisdom of God, were being carnally minded, uh, or in other words, being wise in the ways of this world rather than being spiritually wise. So let me make the first point about the incompatibility of being spiritual uh, in the Lord whilst at the same time being divided within the church, being spiritual and being divided amongst believers, verses 1 to 4. Now we need to remember that Paul is addressing the church a church filled with believers who had received uh, the Holy Spirit. So whilst they all have the ability to be spiritually one with God, some are less surrendered to the Spirit's control and more given over to their fleshly or worldly desires. So Paul makes the point that the worldly wise Christian, uh, to the, for the worldly wise Christian, that your jealousy and quarreling marks you out as mere humans. I say that again, your jealousy and quarreling marks you out as mere humans rather than spiritual beings under Christ. And that this divisiveness is a worldly trait. You see it all throughout the world. Uh, divisions is a very human trait. So Paul points out that a Christian would be infantile, like a baby, in their spiritual Christ-likeness when they succumb to the temptation to factionalism. Uh, it means to basically be a part of a faction or cliquish or uh, having a particular leader and following that and saying, our leader is better than the other one. And not only that, a sense of superiority over groups of Christians when they say, Verse 4, uh, I follow Paul. And another says, I follow Apollos. Uh, are you not mere human beings? Verse 5, what after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. 
But why is it infantile for Christians to feel superior over another group of Christians based on who you follow? Paul puts it as such because these immature followers uh, focus their sense of superiority or greatness from the leader or the teacher they follow. And they have a very worldly idea that great leaders should lord it over others, dominate others, and be served by others. Their attitudes have contributed to division within the church because their jealousy and quarreling arises from a wrong understanding of the role of Christian leaders and a wrong focus on the only uh, human leader or teacher. In other words, they were paying attention to the followers rather than God. So let me make the second point that Paul teaches in dealing with this unity within the church, which is that uh, Christian leaders serve. Yes, you might be surprised. Christian leaders are supposed to serve. Paul makes the point that Christian leaders like uh, Paul and Apollos uh, that these factions are following are diakonoi, uh, what we translate as servants. Diakonoi is this Greek word that says people who serve sometimes at the table or effectively uh, their, their life is, is spent basically waiting on others. Uh, in fact, uh, the Malay word abdi is, uh, is, uh, is a very similar term that is used for this. Uh, through whom we come to believe. So let me repeat that. Verse 5 says that they are, Christian leaders are, diakonoi, servants, through whom you came to believe. This should remind us of the mind of Christ who said those who would be great among the followers must be servant of all. In other words, those who wishes to be the greatest amongst you must be the least and serve others. We also remember Jesus' example as teacher who served his followers, washed their feet, and said that he came to serve and not to be served. Not only that, he said that he came to give his life as a ransom for many. Now that's a staggering thought for those of you who desire to be Christian leaders, to be seen as those who are up front. Uh, with uh, the leadership of the church, that there is no room for factionalism, division, and a sense of superiority in Christian ministry. Not when those who would be great leaders in the Christian understanding and sense of it should be striving to be the least and servants who work to bring many to believe in Christ and give their lives as a ransom to many. Now, when you see that happening in a follower, that they serve and they give their lives in order that others would be ransomed or would be set free, when you see that happening in a Christ follower, you then see a mature Christian and a spirit-surrendered Christian uh, who is obedient to God. Now, Paul also makes the subsequent point that the followers' uh, focus should not be on the servants, but on the master and the Lord whom these servants follow. For, uh, in verse 5, it says, The Lord has assigned to each his task. The Lord has assigned. In other words, there is someone above these leaders. Uh, they don't stand on their own. They report to a master and a leader above them. And in verse 9, uh, according to his labor, his reward. In other words, the Lord will give, according to the labor of these followers, his reward. Now, both of this indicate that there is a Lord and Master above them. So rather than following the leaders uh, of these factions within the church, they should be following the Master who is over these leaders. So. All followers have their unique assignment from their Lord, and their response in spiritual surrender and obedience to God is acknowledged and rewarded by God rather than through worldly acclaim and the 
accolades of this world which are temporary. Now, unfortunately, these were the very things that the so-called leaders who Paul calls infantile were pursuing to be recognized, to be uh, given a claim, to order people around, and to, in a way, were causing disunity and factionalism, division within the church. So Paul brings the focus back to God because it is only God who makes things grow. God alone is perfect, holy, and good. His followers are far from it. They fall short of God's perfect standard. But Paul also highlights an awesome mystery and privilege of walking in step with the Spirit of God. So this brings me to the third point, which is uh, that in being a servant of God, we build the church. We. God is building his church, but we are working together with him to build the church. Let's hear the emphasis on verse 9. Verse 9 reads, For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. God, God, God. God's service or ministry, God's field, God's building. It's all God. All of us, big or small, have our role as co-workers. We are in this together and we are here to support each other. It is not my work or your work that is greater or lesser, but it is all God's work, God's ministry and God's service as he assigns. So Paul uses the imagery of the field and the building to remind us that even as we live and work in these spaces, it is not my church or your church or some other church or denomination, field or building. It is all God's church, God's field, God's building. It is all so very, very, so, so, so very, very important that we have the right perspective of who is the owner of the field, Lord of the world, Master and God of it all. This church is God's field, Penang Trinity is God's field and God's building. As much as the churches up and down the road are also His church, His field, his building. And we in our church, as well as those in the other churches, are all working for the same big boss. What's more, the farm worker knows that as much as he plants and waters the seed diligently and carefully, it is God who does the heavy work of giving the growth, causing the sun to rise and the rains to fall. The builder builds on the foundation that God has already provided. Foundation of Jesus Christ, the church's one foundation. So whatever growth we see, therefore, is all built by God's grace. It's a gift from God. It's not something that we are proud that we have worked into it. It is primarily God's gift of grace to us, freely given. Therefore, there's no room for boasting or a sense of superiority that we are better. Uh, Therefore, no reason for division. So, although it's God's gift of grace and although God is doing all this heavy lifting, Paul warns us that we each have our responsibility. We're still part of this together. And that each should build with care. That's what he says in verse 10. Each should build with care. That care also involved using valuable materials that would stand God's fiery testing. Now, Paul is not saying that we should build and decorate our church with gold, silver, and jewels for Christmas. No, not none of that. <coughs> uh, especially when we understand that the field and the building are uh, metaphors of the followers, uh, physical followers of Christ. That's why we always say the church is not a building, a physical brick and mortar building. 
church are the people who are followers of Christ within that sphere. So, uh, what is really intended about this is when we invest and build using all these costly materials, is that our service to the Lord and His people is costly. And it gives rise to belief and faith in God that will survive the fiery trials of temptation, suffering, persecution, and not only that, God's righteous judgment. So the duty of care is serious when we understand that the field and the building uh, that we are a part of is summed up in Paul's third metaphor, which he explains in verses 16 to 17. It reads, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred. And you together are that temple. We are God's temple. God will destroy those who destroy his temple. The one thing that destroys the temple is the fellowship and the unity of the church. Be very careful, therefore, if you seek to bring division within the church and destroy the church. So if God's Spirit dwells in the midst of this church, every church that belongs to him. Do you then serve and build God's temple with the wisdom of God, which is the mind of Christ? Or do you build in the way of this world that causes division, disunity and destruction? Do we go out in our own selfish mind to build the biggest church and have this world domination plan? Very selfish. Let us therefore maintain our unity as Jesus prayed for us and as Paul urges us through recognizing the fundamental equality and humble position of all Christians when compared against God's infinitely holy and perfect standards of which we often fall short. of. As living bricks in a living temple with the Spirit of God in our midst, let us care for each other as best we can in surrender to the Spirit's prompting. We rejoice with those who rejoice. We mourn with those who mourn. And when one part of our body suffers, we all suffer together. I want to thank our Sister Susan Pui, who shared a testimony earlier as an encouragement of hope for us. Her testimony is an example of spiritual unity, even as Christian brothers and sisters were moved by the Spirit of the Lord to pray for her, to help her uh, in sending her to the hospital, sometimes bringing over food, and just encouraging her, helping and journeying with her, spending time with her. They served to cause her to hope, to believe, and to trust in the Lord who provided the growth and healing in her faith. She, in turn, was able to strengthen and encourage others, even strangers, to hope and to believe in God. Even this weekend, as we mourn the loss of a fellow brother, Mr. So Chui Tong, we mourn with them and we weep together with them. We remember their family in our prayers. And we are together in unity as a community that rejoices together and grieves together. As we come together in one heart and one mind, in one spirit, to celebrate Holy Communion, let's share a common unity as equals before God, in desperate need of God's grace in these times of difficulty, of pandemic and isolation. Let us remind each other that we are united by that which is greater than blood, language, color, and skin, and race. We are united through the power of the Holy Spirit. And in this, we are reminded that we are not alone. Our God is with us and in our midst, even as we gather together online as a church. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
May the Lord cause us to know that God's Spirit works towards unity. Not disunity, not division. May we know that God's Spirit works towards unity. May we be careful as to how we build the church, not with things that are temporary and passing, but with our time, our treasures and our talents that will last the test of time and God's testing. And may the Lord cause us to build and encourage unity in God's Spirit. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord, unite us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Let Christ be the foundation of our church and not our worldly wisdom. May we ever be reminded that it is you who gives the growth and you who calls us to work together as co-workers who build up the church by your gracious Spirit. We ask in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Three questions for your reflection in a time of discussion, in small groups or in your family later on. First one I mentioned, I'm pretty sure that you have your grievous story of disunity within the church, with your family, or even within the workplace. So spend some time elaborating on situations where division and disunity or unity and co-working have occurred within the local church or within your own family situation. How has it affected church growth? or your team, or your school, college, or your family? How has unity affected it? How has this unity affected it? Care about that. Uh, second question. How would you apply Paul's teaching in scripture to dealing with such division and disunity? How would you apply what we have learned today, what God has spoken to you or whispered to you in your heart? The humility to know our equality before God fact that we should be looking towards God rather than our fallen leaders. Thirdly, last question, what do you understand about the call to build carefully? What do you understand about the call to build carefully? What would that mean for you? Are you really investing your time, your treasures and talents and putting in uh, the work of belief and uh, discipleship of others that will stand the test of what will you build carefully for? Let's prepare our hearts in order to celebrate in unity of heart, mind and spirit in recognition that Christ is with us when we are gathered in his name. Let us take time to prepare the communion elements. Let me pass this time on to Pastor Shun uh, to invite you to the Lord's table. We come now to the order of Holy Communion, and I hope you have your elements ready, uh, some bread or biscuits and some juice. Uh, we come to the invitation of the Lord's table. And so, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. At this time, I encourage you to uh, take a, a posture of humility. You may choose to kneel, you may choose to sit uh, as you are able. And let's pray the prayer of confession and pardon together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbours, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's spend some moments in quiet confession before the Lord in repentance. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
At this time, we want to pass around the peace, uh, signs of peace uh, that, that God extends to us and we extend to one another. And so signs of God's reconciliation and love. You may choose to turn to somebody next to you, give them a hug, uh, give them a, a pat on the back. <laughs> uh, online, you may choose to type in the chat, the peace of the Lord be with you. And as forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. We want to remember those who are poor and needy. And so if you have not yet, uh, I want to encourage you to uh, make your, your offerings before the Lord. Uh, to, you, you can give to the Maybank account number that was put up earlier during the announcements. And uh, make sure you make a note that it is meant for the poor and needy. As we have responded to the Lord's invitation to the table, let us come with thankful hearts in order to celebrate this communion together in the Spirit of the Lord. Will you respond to the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, at this time I invite you to uh, uh, prepare or receive the sacraments and uh, to have on hand. And so, if you are alone on your own, you just 
hold on to the elements yourself. If you're home in a family, then uh, the head of the family or someone uh, in the family who is uh, designated to do this, uh, you distribute the elements to each other. And when you're ready, we shall partake of these sacraments together. We prepare the bread in one hand, or the wafer, or the biscuit, and the juice, or plain water, if you have it. Holding up the bread in your hand, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus. The blood of Christ given for you. Take and drink this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus. And may it preserve you to life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let's lift our voices together as we sing this wonderful hymn of our church, the church's one foundation, Jesus Christ our Lord. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ the Lord. She is His new creation by water. sung that Jesus is the sure foundation on which our church is built on. May I invite you now to adopt an attitude of reverence as we receive the benediction. Let us pray. Brothers and sisters, as you depart from here, may the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ bind you together in unity. May you be an encouragement to others and may the mind of Christ secure you and sustain you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's join our voices together as we sing the threefold Amen. Amen. Friends, we thank you for joining us for this uh, Sunday service, uh, Communion Sunday. May the message of unity in our Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit continue to bind you in the grace of our Father. God bless you. 
Have a blessed week and may you be a source of light and salt to this world. Do join us if you wish uh, for a time of ministry to by clicking on the ministry link uh, that's available on our live.net.org site. Thank you.